where there is two or three gathered in his name there God is but even when you're by yourself yes, yes. and there's nobody in the room but you yes, yes. you need to know God is right there with you and all you got to do is open up your mouth and give God the glory and give God the praise for the Lord is worthy from the rising of the sun he's worthy to the going down of the same he's worthy and God's name is to be praised I don't know about you but I'm so grateful for the name of Jesus how excellent is that name that name in which souls are saved that name in which sickness and disease is healed that name that is above every name that name in which every knee shall bow oh, yes. and every name shall confess or person shall confess that name Jesus is Lord something about that name causes demons to flee something about that name it can change the atmosphere. Something about that name helps you to sleep in the midnight hour. Anybody out there know anything about that name? Sometimes you don't even know what to pray for. But if you can just say, Jesus, I mean, you know that the Spirit, the Spirit will make intercession for you. Sometimes we don't know how to pray, what to pray. Sometimes you can't even utter the words from your mouth, but I thank you, Lord, that your soul is so connected to ours, your spirit is so connected to ours, that you know what we're going through, you know what we're feeling. I lift the name of the Lord with you wherever you are. We come to worship God. We come to give God praise. We come to press pause for a moment. And remember that God is the reason why we live. It is in Christ that we live, we move, and have our being. Nobody, nobody but God who has shown his love for us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is deserving of our praise, deserving of our worship. So why the psalmist says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Can you just give God praise right where you are? I can't see you, but I know you can see me. But better than that, God sees you. Can you just lift up your voice to the Lord? Can you say, thank you, Jesus? Thank you. Can you give God praise for all the things that he's brought you through? All the things that you worried about that did not come to pass. Even when you found yourself in the furnace of affliction, God was right there with you, keeping you. Hallelujah. Praise God that God has the power to keep us in the fire. Hallelujah. To keep us in the flood that we may not die, that we may not drown. God is that kind of God. Beloved, I am so grateful and thankful that God is able to unite us through technology. I thank you for inviting me into your home or, the, or on your job or in your car, wherever you may be. And I'm so grateful that the spirit of the Lord is not confined to brick and mortar, but the spirit of the Lord is wherever we are. And I'm so grateful that the spirit connects us all, all over the world. So God bless you. I ask that you do a couple things. One, make sure that you're praying and interceding for your church praying and interceding for our community and praying and interceding for our world. Even when things look out of control, God is always in control. And we serve a sovereign God. Oh, yes. We don't always understand why. We don't understand what. We don't always understand how. But we will not lean to our own understanding. We will trust God. We're talking about the one who created the heavens and the earth. God did not need to consult us, but God is all wise. And so we trust in the Lord. I want to ask you also, make sure you share this video. It takes only a few seconds. Share it with someone. 
or tag their name in the video. Make sure that you speak back to me. I know I can't see you, but speak back to me. I can feel your vibes. I can feel your spirit while I am worshiping and while I am ministering unto you. And at the end of our worship, I do ask you, for those of you who are able, to please consider giving a financial gift to our ministry. We're believing that God is going to meet our needs, and that God is going to meet your needs. Amen. Before we begin with the word of God, let us pray. Our glorious God, we're so grateful and thankful this morning. Thankful, oh God, that we are safe and secure. Safe and secure in your arms. Even in the midst of a pandemic, oh God, you are just as much with us today than as you were yesterday. Lord, I pray for those who are watching, who are weary, who are fearful, who are fretful. I pray for your peace to come upon them right now, for your peace to fall on them. That peace that comes from knowing, Lord, that everything is going to be all right because you are indeed in control. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, that has our hearts heavy, we give that situation we give you that thing. We give you that person. Now, oh God, we ask for that peace that surpasses all understanding, that it may guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, even as the Imani Church congregation grieves, grieves the death of one of our beloved, we thank you, oh Lord, that he is now sinking in heaven's choir. We thank you, oh God, that you have allowed him time on this earth to make great impact in the lives of many. But while we are still alive and while we are still breathing, we will praise your name. We will dare to trust you. We will dare to stand on your word. We will dare to stand on your promises. We will dare to believe. Literally, Lord, we will walk by faith and not by sight because the coronavirus does not have the last word in our lives. Cancer does not have the last word. Sickness does not have the last word. Poverty does not have the last word, oh God. You have the last word. And we've got victory in Christ Jesus. We shall not be defeated. We are in Christ Jesus and we bless your holy name for you are good you're holy and you're righteous it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray that all the beloved people of God say amen will you say amen God bless you out there amen I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is the very first book of the New Testament. Matthew, the eighth chapter. Matthew, the eighth chapter. Just going to lift up two verses, verses 14 and 15. Matthew 8, just because you're at home does not mean you cannot... Grab your Bible, grab your Bible, amen, or look up these scriptures online or on your cellular devices. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. I'm going to reread that. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. Anybody got a fever this morning? He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. This morning, I'm going to entitle this message, The Cure for an Infection. The cure for an infection. Now, I don't have all your amens this morning, but make sure you send us some love. Amen. Send us some hearts to let us know that you are listening and hearing. 
the cure for an infection. Peter, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, appears to have a problem in his home. While he was out following Jesus, sitting under his teaching and learning from him, there was something going on in his home. Peter, having been called by Jesus, called to be a fisher of men, answers the call of God upon his life. Yet, there seems to be a situation that he has not dealt with in his personal life. Peter, the one who has witnessed firsthand Jesus' power to heal the sick and cast out demons, has not even invited Jesus in to heal a situation in his home. How is it that Peter has been out ministering with Jesus but unable to minister at home, praying for others yet fail to pray for what was going on at home, devoted to helping others become free, yet neglecting to take care of his own. I wonder how many of you are followers of Jesus, uh, considers yourself a disciple of Christ, a child of God, one who has been called by his name, faithful to God's service, but like Peter, you got a problem in your home. It's a problem that you have not dealt with, a problem that you have overlooked, a problem that appears to be insignificant, so you have given it no time and no attention. Someone watching this morning has a situation brewing at home brewing on your job, brewing in your relationship, but you haven't realized it because your mind was so focused on Jesus, so focused in other places that you failed to recognize what was happening right around you. Focus on church. When we were able to assemble together, focus on your ministry, focus on your call, focus on your spiritual development, but real talk, real talk for a moment, beloved, have we allowed ministry? Have we allowed church? Have we allowed service or our pursuit for the things of God to cause us to neglect our responsibilities and commitments in other areas of our lives? Real talk. Maybe our personal dreams, maybe our careers, our goals took precedence over other areas of our lives, such as our marriage, our children, our finances, and even our health. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with church or ministry. Nothing wrong with pursuing your dreams and your goals, but when those things that we do becomes a means of avoidance of other important things, my brother, we've got a problem. When we are so focused on Jesus, so focused on other things that our homes and our personal lives begin to suffer the impact of our distraction or avoidance, we are indeed headed for a crisis. Let me ask you a question if you mind. Now that many of us are shut in during this pandemic, what has the Lord revealed to you that you have left undone? I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm not talking about your brother. I'm not talking about anybody else in your home. What have you left undone? What has the Lord revealed to you that has been neglected, ignored, overlooked, or minimized, and now you realize, I've got a problem on my hand. In our text, Peter's mother-in-law is lying in bed with a fever. If we're not careful, we'll just breeze over her story because after all, it's just a fever. It's not like she's blind, crippled, or mute. It's not like she's suicidal or on the verge of a breakdown. It's not like she's lost a child or anything. She is simply in bed with a fever. Uh, but the fact that the story is contained in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, though the details vary, and despite it just being a few verses, tells us that this is an important story nonetheless with a very important message for us all. 
But what we see here is that there is someone in Peter's home with a fever. Maybe Peter didn't see it as significant, but notice that the moment that Jesus walks in the door and sees Peter's mother-in-law lying in the bed incapacitated with a fever, he immediately heals her. The problem that we have, beloved, is that we brush things off that need our full attention because we see it as insignificant. We see it as a minor problem. We see it as just a hiccup in our plans. We see it as too small to be taken seriously. Oh, but the fever, the fever that Peter's mother-in-law was experiencing was a sign. It was a sign. The fever was a sign, and signs cannot be ignored because the purpose of a sign is to alert you, is to guide you or direct you. Signs have meaning. They convey a message to us, and Peter's mother-in-law's fever was trying to tell Peter that there was an in infection somewhere. Beloved, there are signs all around us trying to give us a message and too many of us fail to see what the signs may be pointing to. Your child has become antisocial and withdrawn. That may be a sign that constant arguing and bickering in your relationship. That may be a sign you keep getting overlooked for the promotion. That may be a sign unexplained explained aches and pain in your body. That may be a sign but because we often fail to heed the signs, what had the potential, listen to this, what had the potential to be healed quickly or resolved quickly because it was neglected and overlooked now becomes life-threatening or threatening to your family, threatening to your relationship, threatening to your health, your peace, and even your joy. How many of you have overlooked signs that were right there in your face? telling you that something is wrong, but I was, my focus was somewhere else. Focused on Jesus, focused on the call, focused on the career. Peter's mother-in-law has a fever, and it was a sign that she was dealing with some sort of infection in her body. But as long as the fever was ignored, the infection had the potential to grow into something more harmful. There, again, is an infection in Peter's home. Now, we don't know the cause for the infection or if the infection has the potential to spread to other members of the family. However, there doesn't seem to have been any worry on Peter's end. But we have no record in this particular passage of Peter attempting to pray for his mother-in-law. There is no account of Peter soliciting the disciples for prayer, nor does Peter ask Jesus to heal his mother-in-law. Mind you, Peter has witnessed firsthand Jesus healing all manners of sickness and disease, but Peter does not seek healing for his mother-in-law because after all, it's just a fever. And so the question is, when do you invite Jesus in to fix what's broken, to heal what's hurting, or to cure the infection that is lurking somewhere in your home? When is the right time to call him in? Could it be that Peter has neglected to inform Jesus of his mother-in-law's fever because of pride? Hmm. After all, Peter is a disciple of Jesus. In fact, he is a part of Jesus' inner circle. Peter can't tell Jesus that there are signs of an infection in his home because that may, uh, may make Peter appear incapable of managing his own home. Mm. Ah, there are preachers out there who can preach the paint off the wall but they got a spouse at home with a fever. There is an entrepreneur out there, an entrepreneur doing their thing, making a name for themselves, but you've got a teenage child with a fever. 
And some of you are working hard and grinding and serving and taking care of business. But you yourself, you've been working with a fever too prideful to take time out to get some emotional or spiritual help. How many of you have got a fever in your home that you have not dealt with? But Peter can't dare bother Jesus with his personal issues because he cannot appear too distracted by home and then perceived as having too many problems to be used by Jesus for he has been called by God and so he cannot allow home life to get in the way of his mission and so Peter devotes more time and attention with Jesus uh, trying to heal other people's lives uh, than those in his own home uh, that are in need of healing. He spends more time praying for other people's situations uh, but neglects to pray for the problems at home. He is busy following Jesus from town to town and going from synagogue to a synagogue. But when does Peter take the time to minister at home? There are some folks who resent the God that you worship because you give so much time and attention to your God and neglect the people in your home, the people that you say you love, the people who are are part of your life isn't your first ministry to your own household isn't it I'm, I'm just asking you a question and I'm not talking about again I'm not talking about neglecting God or the church or your calling or your ministry or your business or your career but rather inviting the power of God into your home in order to deal with the infection that all the signs are pointing to because check this out, ignoring the signs won't make the problem go away. It just allows the problem to grow bigger and become more damaging. Do you hear me? Send me some hearts if you hear me. Who's got an infection in their marriage? You guys have had a fever for a long time. It's been pointing to you that something is not right. Who's losing their child to an infection? It's obvious that their behavior is changing and their grades have been dropping. Who's got an infection in their finances? You ignore it and uh, you just ignore it and you just try to name it and claim it, but really it points to some bad spending habits. How many of us are dancing and shouting, quoting scriptures all day on social media, but we got an affection in our home? Maybe you're not Peter. Maybe you're not Peter, but you're like Peter's mother-in-law. You're the one that's suffering with a fever, and you've become resentful because everyone goes about their day not even noticing that you have shut down, not noticing that you have become incapacitated because of an infection that you can't get rid of. No one cares to know how you're doing, how you're feeling, and they talk and act as if everything is normal when in fact there's an infection and I believe that even in the house of God, there are many that sit in our churches that have a fever serving in ministry with the fever, preaching from the pulpit with a fever. And we choose to ignore the few infected people because there are too many other people and things that need our attention. But what is infecting the few can spread like cancer and infect everyone everybody that's around them if we do not heed the signs and seek to heal the infection in fact many of our institutions have signs that an infection is lurking our educational system where we teach kids how to pass the test but we don't teach them how to prepare for life there are signs of an infection 
nation in our judicial system when people of color are disproportionately given different sentences for the same crime committed by others. There is an infection in our land and an infection in the church and there is an infection in our house and we cannot continue to ignore it. In our text again, again, Jesus comes to Peter's house and the first thing that Jesus notices is that Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus notices that Peter's mother-in-law is lying in bed with a fever. What everyone has come to overlook, Jesus cannot overlook because as long as Peter, Peter's mother-in-law is incapacitated with a fever, she is unable to live a productive life. As long as she is incapacitated, so will her worship and service. As long as she is incapacitated with a fever, her relationships will suffer. Her relationship with her daughter, her relationship with her son-in-law, her relationship with those that are closest to her. How many of you out there have a fever and you have had it for quite some time and what started out as just a fever has now become a disease that has crippled you. Can't get out of bed, can't work, can't serve, can't come to church, can't love your children, can't even love yourself. Some of you have learned, however, to function with your fever, but you have contaminated the environment with your mood swings, with your frustration, and with your social distancing. You are placed a wall up, and you're only allowing people to get so close because you have a fever. In fact, you have placed yourself under quarantine. But Jesus, I'm so glad that Jesus ain't nothing like us. But Jesus immediately went to the mother-in-law. He touched her. Because understand this, Peter cannot continue to serve on the outside and neglect the problems that are on the inside of his home. Let me repeat that. I'm talking to somebody out there. You can continue to serve on the outside, but you're neglecting um, the problems that are right there in your home. I've come to discover uh, that some people use church. Uh, yes, they use ministry and they use religion as an escape from home, uh, an escape from their responsibilities, uh, an escape from their commitments. Uh, but the evidence of God in my life uh, is not simply by what I do for God, uh, but all also for what I allow God to do for me. Don't you know that he heals my life? He restores my hope. He renews my strength. He sets me free. He empowers me to overcome. He gives me rest for my soul. He brings peace into my life. He wipes all my tears away. He gives me a fresh start. He gives me a new beginning. He fixes all that is broken. He mends every tear and and ripped in my relationship. Is there anybody out there watching who understand it's not only about what you do for God, but what you allow God to do for you? I'm glad that you serve and that you worship and you post all these sweet little posts all day. But, but, but what are you allowing God to do for you? Some of you don't even like being home. You can't stand being home, locked up inside. Because now you got to face yourself. Now you got to deal with children that you have been able to ignore. Now you got to look at that man or that woman in the face every day. Yeah, I'm talking to you. The Bible says that when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. The first thing, the first thing that is needed to cure an infection is that you must open the door for Jesus to come into your home. Listen to what I said. You must open the door. Type that in the comments. Open the door to Jesus. Open, to the, open the door to Jesus. Uh-huh. Open the door, not to your heart. Open the door to Jesus to come 
into your home. I know that sounds simple, but a door must be open for him to come in, and you must give him all access, all access into your life. You must give him access into your personal space. You must allow him to come into your mess so that he can help you clean things up. You have to allow him to shine the light in those dark places. You, do, do, do you know, notice how a dark room hides dust and dirt? But then you open the blinds, you open the curtains, the sunlight comes in and you see stuff that you didn't see before. And what you rather do, just close the blinds and close the curtains. But you got to allow him to shine light in those dark places in order to expose the source of the pain, the source of the bitterness, the source of the infection. Jesus comes in and immediately he goes to the mother-in-law because her fever indicates that there is an infection lurking. Let me ask you another question, beloved. If Jesus were to come into your home, now in Peter's home, he went directly to Peter's mother-in-law. But if Jesus were to come into your home, where would be the first place he would go? Where, where would be the first place he would stop? Where's the place where the infection lurks? Because understand Jesus cannot dwell in an infectious place. That's why when he came into Peter's home before he spoke, before he rested his feet, before he did anything, he went directly to the source of the infection, Peter's mother-in-law. And someone needs to open the door and allow Jesus in. Allow him into your marriage. If you're dating, allow Jesus in. Now, you might be on a search for somebody else soon. But allow Jesus in. You're trying to heal it with counseling. And I believe in counseling. We need more folks in counseling. But you also got to open the door for Jesus to come in and to heal it. You have to invite Jesus into your heart. You've got to invite him in to the source of your infection. Whatever is going on in here, whether it's unforgiveness or resentment or animosity or anger that resides there, whatever it is, you've got to allow Jesus to get in there. You've got to do it because this is a matter of life and death. And you open the door again by inviting him in. I'm so amazed when I talk to people. So many people struggle with prayer. Pastor Humphrey, they sit in my office. They sit before me, and, and they struggle with prayer because they don't know what to say. And oftentimes I have to tell them, say to me what you would say. Say to God what you would say to me. Say to God what you would say to your best friend. You got to talk to them. You got to be real with him. You got to open up to him. You got to let him get inside of you. You can't just visit him once a week like you visit a therapist. It ain't going to work. Because he doesn't want to visit with you. He wants to dwell with you. But understand that if he's going to dwell with you, there are some things that need to be cleaned up in your life. And some of you, you become comfortable with living with the infection. You become comfortable in your paralysis, paralysis and your suffering. But God cannot leave you, come into your life and leave you the same. So if you want a better home, if you want a better marriage, if you want a better relationship with your children, if you want a better heart, a better spirit, then you've got to open the door and welcome Jesus in. And don't try to hide stuff. Don't try to put stuff in a closet. You just got to let God in and let God see who you really are and let God see how you really live. Because do know this, he already knows. He's just waiting for the invitation to come in. 
and do a work in your life. So the second thing is only two points today. We ain't got three. So the second thing that is needed to cure an infection is close and personal contact with Jesus. Close and personal contact with Jesus. Jesus touched her. When was the last time you were touched by God? Has he been close enough to touch you? Jesus' touch was to let her know that there's a better way to live. His touch with her was to let her know that life is worth living. His touch was taking her pain away, and his touch was showing her just how much she meant to him. I know you believe in God. That's not the question. That's not the issue. But are you being touched by Jesus because of what, 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 you, what used to hurt you so badly shouldn't still be hurting you today? What used to make you so mad should still be making you um, angry and causing you to throw tantrums. Uh, because when Jesus touches you, he empowers you to get up out of your situation. Uh, some of you have been in the church forever with, the, with this infection. Infection. But Jesus touched her and she got up. Somebody has been incapacitated by a fever for far too long. Your relationship and your health, your strength and your motivation has become non-existent. But Jesus is right there to get you up out of your pit. Jesus is right there to bring you out of the darkness and into the light. Jesus is right there to breathe life right back into you. Somebody out there that's listening you need to be healed there is a household that needs to be healed there is a relationship a parent and child relationship that needs to be healed but you've got to let Jesus get up close and personal and touch you where you hurt Jesus came in saw the place of infection healed Peter's mother-in-law and she got up the Bible says she got up and began to to wait on Jesus. That is a sign that you have been healed when you can now turn your heart and your affections to truly serve Jesus, to truly serve your family, and to truly serve those that you say you love. Beloved, I'm glad that you worship Jesus, but now it's time to let him in. I know that you like to sing songs to him, but when are you going to let him in? I know that you believe in him but when are you gonna open up the door and let Jesus in let him into your personal space don't treat Jesus the way you treat other folks you let him in but you only let them in to, into a certain room of the house because they can't see the other areas because the areas are off guard there are set, there are rooms that's open to the public and then there are rooms that are hidden but Jesus Jesus says, if I come in, I want to have all access to the basement, to the attic, to the bedroom, to the family room. Is there anybody out there who understands that Jesus wants to come into your life and heal your fever and heal your infections? That's what he wants. This playing church, just coming, shouting, screaming, and then going back home, going back to that place we don't even want to be, working all that overtime because you don't want to be there because we don't want to deal with the issues after work. Got to go stop at the bar and have a few drinks because I really don't want to face what's at home. But we call ourselves children of God, and we got all these unresolved issues and conflicts but now it's time to not just believe in God but let God in let God see you for who you really are we're good at camouflaging we can put on the makeup we can dress it up but Jesus is looking for intimacy I want to see you I want to see you for exactly who you are because I want to love the pain away 
And I want to love the fever away. I want to love the infection away. You want your life to change? That's how it begins. Church ain't going to change you, but Jesus will. This is where we come together, where we gather in order to be reminded of God's grace, God's goodness, God's mercy, God's power. But when we leave here, we've got to take what we've heard. We've got to take what we've learned. We've got to take it home. Now, after I've done serving my brothers and sisters, I got to serve my husband. I got to serve my wife. I got to be a mother, not just to my small kids, but to my grown kids. If that's you out there and you say, Pastor Humphrey, you're, you're talking to me right now. I just want you to extend your, <clears throat> your hand towards me. I can't see you, but God sees you. Extend your hands or lift your hands up wherever you are. Our glorious God, I thank you. You see every hand that is raised, every hand that is lifted. There are those of Lord who have learned to worship you and learned to love, to, to serve you but it has been a means of distraction and avoidance. They come and give all their time and attention to the church and we're so grateful for them, but reality is their homes are suffering. Many of them are out there making that money, but their homes are suffering. Lord, I pray that you come in and heal whatever's hurting because Lord, you are a God of restoration. You are a God who is literally able to lift us up from our pit and bring us to a place of freedom. You have the power to break every shackle, every yoke. And I ask you right now to break that yoke, break that fever right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Heal their homes. May their homes be a place of light. May it be a home of love, a home of peace, a home of joy where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty right now, oh God. I ask that you invade their homes, oh God, and that your spirit will rest, rule, and abide there, oh God. And I pray that, pray that it will be a place well chaos will cease in the name of Jesus I pray that it will be a place where conflict will cease in the name of Jesus I pray that pray that it will be a place where sickness and disease cannot dwell in the name of Jesus heal every heart heal every mind heal every soul heal every child heal every marriage wherever it is that has us bound yeah. and unproductive and unfruitful in our homes heal it yes. while we are, are on downtime, heal it come in clean it up we ask you to come in and see and I thank you Lord that right now oh God you are purging souls right now in the name of Jesus Remove the toxins from their souls right now in the name of Jesus. Remove the source of their infection right now in the name of Jesus. Go to that place of pain. Heal it. Touch it, oh God. And then, Lord, show them a better way, a better life. Lord, we ask this in the glorious name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior of our souls. Send me some hearts if you have received that prayer. If you're somebody here and you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've already believed in him. You've always believed in him. The word of God says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And once we make that confession, then we make a decision that for God I live and for God I die. Once we make that confession, now we begin the relationship. And it's not an overnight relationship. It is a overnight, it's not overnight relationship. It is a relationship that is nurtured day by day by day. If you have received Jesus Christ into your Lord, into your life, make sure that you send us a note at Imani1505 at gmail.com. Imani1505 at gmail.com. If this message has touched you in any way, in any form, don't just share it. Share the video, but I want you to send me a message. Let me know what you're going to do. 
about letting Jesus into your life. Imani1505 at gmail.com. God bless you. God bless you. But before we go, I do want to ask you if you would please take a moment. Don't, don't shut out the video yet. But if you would be so kind enough for those of you who are able, I know many of you have lost your jobs and you've lost your source of income. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I pray that there will be no lack in your home, that your child will not go to bed hungry at night, that God will maintain a roof over your head and that God will restore everything that has been lost during this pandemic in the name of Jesus. But for those of us who still have employment, I ask that you'll be so kind enough to give an offering, to give a tithe. Um, you can do it through Givelify, Search Imani, United Church of Christ in Euclid, Ohio. You can go to the Imani Church website at imanichurch.org, or you can text to give. I thank you for tuning in. God bless you. I pray you felt my heart. I pray that you felt my love. And I want you to know God is on your side. And with God on your side, you cannot go wrong. I love you, beloved. I will see you next Sunday, 10 o'clock a.m., right here. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. everything I need. I have everything I need. Everything, everything, everything. I have everything Thank you, Jesus. I need. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. I have everything. everything.